Hello guys, this is the second video tutorial in our Firebase Cloud Function video tutorial series. In this series, we are uh, using the Fi uh, Firebase Cloud version 2 uh, to uh, make our developments. Alright, so last video we saw how to create this cloud function and we have actually deployed this function into our server. So if you haven't seen that tutorial, I recommend you to watch that because in that tutorial I uh, showed you how to um, implement the Firebase and Cloud function into a project. Alright, so in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to use Cloud function to manage your database in order to make some changes. Alright, without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so uh, first of all, I want to uh, tell you that there are two type of cloud functions uh, that you can use uh, to do some certain things. First is trigger type and the second one is schedule uh, function type. Alright, so when we talk about trigger type, uh, when we create a trigger type cloud function uh, so that function will execute only if special things is happening all right let's say uh, let me show you uh, show you an example let's say i have my real time database in here and i have already created a user let's say i am going to change a user name or let's say I'm going to add a new data let's say I'm going to add a new uh, data like this hello world so I can use a trigger function to check whether the hello uh, not got any values and I can uh, retrieve that value from cloud function and do some things within that function alright so trigger function are uh, using when if a certain things is happening it can be a value addition or it can be some value is uh, creating or some value is updating or something uh, is uh, removing all right so when some special thing like that is happening that's when the trigger function is executing all right let's see this example um, let's see I'm gonna change this hello uh, not the value so I wanna make a certain cloud function to catch that change I'm going to the code and I'm going to create a new uh, function. You can always create a new function using uh, starting to use this exports uh, variable exports dot then you should uh, define the function name. Let's say uh, hello not is changed so I'm going to check whether the hello nodes value is changed or not and there is a certain API to do this I'm going to check that API you can go to the documentation with this button and in here you can go to let's see real time database all the thing you want to do with the fun cloud function is in this api so you can uh, take some things mm, let's see extend with cloud functions i have made some experiments and uh, got the idea how to do these things Alright, so you can see two generation 
I'm not going to talk about one first one. Uh, there are a lot of tutorials. So in the second generation, you can see on value written already triggered when data is written in real time database. So this function will execute when some of the data is written in the real time database. So let's say according to our example, we say I want to check if the hello not is changed or not. All right. So I'm using uh, on value written uh, function. I have to uh, initialize these codes in my script first. So I'm gonna do like this. Um, on request on value created. All right. Now I'm gonna save this and next thing you can see in here uh, when a real-time data event triggers it passes an event object to a handler function all right so you can use this code is snip right here to uh, check the changes within your database i'm gonna copy this code and i'm gonna paste it right here I know I don't own this name. I have already name, already a name with me on value created. So this method will execute if a value is created. All right. Um, so I have to define the path that I want to check. So according to my example, the path is this. All right, so you have to copy that path, paste it. All right, I don't need these uh, comments. So um, when this when this data is changed, then this function will execute. All right, and when this function is executing first. It will trigger this scope and through this event variable all the data will come into this scope all right so first i have got the original value before i change this value that means the world will be assigned to this original value then i have done a logger i will show you in a minute what this mean uh, i'm gonna change this like this so let's say hello is change to um i would say i'm gonna create a new constant new value all right this is my new variable new value i'm gonna change this hello text into some value but before that let's see if my uh, uh, value is changed or not so i'm gonna put the original in here so if somehow i have uh, i change this value then this uh, method will execute and original will be the world and I have print the world value. I'm gonna comment these two. I don't need this. All right, let's see how this is going to work. First, uh, I'm gonna shift right click open terminal. Firebase deploy. All right, I'm going to deploy my new uh, function to the server right now. All right, uh, I have got three errors. First one in line number 30, identify a new value is not in camel case. All right. So I should um, make it camel case value. So Let's say new value. Is this camel case? 
I'm not sure. And the second this uh, is assigned a value but never used. All right, so uh, I haven't used it yet. So for now, I'm gonna comment it. That is the best solution for now, best option. All right, and the third data uh, space is required after a comma, 31, line number 31. Line number 31, all right, here. Okay, I'm gonna save it again, save it and deploy it again. All right, so I have deployed two times and for the two times I got two errors. And for the first uh, time, I got user code fail to load, cannot determine backend specification. Actually, I have done nothing, I just ran the Firebase deploy command again and that error uh, was gone. All right, so I haven't done nothing to do this. What I have done is I just run again uh, the deploy command. All right, for the second time I got this one and this is a common error. You should, you must get this error for the first time. If you do this for the first time, it says, Permission denied values in the event track service agent. If you are, if you recently started to use event track, it may take a few minutes before all new permissions are propagated to the service agent. All right. So what this means is you have to make a certain permission to upload uh, any kind of function, uh, cloud function that involve with uh, Firebase database. All right, so I'm using a function that involve with Firebase database. So I should make this special permission and let me show you how to do that. Um, go to uh, Firebase, Firebase console and from here you can go to the function. And as you can see, I can see my previous function right here and click this three dot and go to detailed usage stats okay this will open up the google cloud console uh, for your account this is not the firebase console this is the google cloud console so in this console you can apply the necessary permission to your use account All right, now let's see the menu and um, let's go to I am IAM and admin. All right, in this section, you can go to the IAM, go to that. In here you can see all the users that can access your database all right so i am a one person that can access uh, my project and there are some few uh, users that from the google uh, company that can access this project uh, they can be virtual uh, users all right so this is the email that I'm using to access this project. So I'm the owner in here and I have to add some permissions in order to work this, work in order to uh, upload my special cloud function. So I'm gonna click edit and I can add some specific um, permission from here. I'm gonna search event talk Event Arc Admin, Event Arc Connection Publisher, Event Arc Developer. I'm gonna add full control over all Event Arc resources. So I'm gonna save, uh, select this role and I'm gonna save this updating policies. All right. In here you can see the Event Arc Admin and when you expand that, you can see your email in this section. So make sure you have successfully given the permission to your email account.
and uh, just wait a couple of minutes to apply that uh, privilege into your account all right now i uh, deployed the function again and this time i have successfully create the operation in my server all right now let's see if the function is working um i'm going to refresh my function list all right so as you can see i have my two functions this is the second function that i have just added it's a, t a trigger type function and um it is it will be triggered by google firebase database created uh process all right so let's see if this is working you can see the view log go to view log all right so this is the log uh you can see you can see all the things that i am printing using this logger uh, function yoga statement in this list all right so if i change the value now this logger will execute and it will print in this logger section all right so i'm gonna change uh, the value now go to real time database and i'm gonna change let's say um go to data and i'm going to change this value let's say one two three and i'm going to my logger section here and i'm going to uh, refresh this all right uh, so as you can see uh, it has printed hello is changed to triple a so what i have done is actually i have first uh world in here then i changed it to one two three and it didn't work actually this didn't work so reason for that is this function uh, won't execute just for an update this function is execute when a value is created all right so value should be create uh, for this function is to call all right so i'm going to delete this whole value and i'm going to create a value let's say hello uh, i'm going to say a new value all right so now i have created a new value uh, with the hello node now i'm gonna refresh this again as you can see now it has printed hello is changed to a new value all right so it has printed a new value uh, in this um, log all right so this function will execute only if the value is created when the value is creating then this function will execute so when you update the value uh, this function won't work so to make that happen you have to use on value updated uh, function 